Okay, so Pi News episode 76. And first up, we have a very cool story from Tom's Hardware. YouTuber upgrades Raspberry Pi 4 to 16 gig of RAM. Now, I reported this in the last Pi News. Made Doctor on YouTube managed to upgrade his Pi 4 from 1 gig to 8 gig, which is very, very impressive. But as you can see from this screen, Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, 16 gig. Now, it's a really great video to watch. Uh, it certainly wasn't an easy task, and someone had donated the 16 gig of RAM. The RAM chip didn't come with any solder balls, and so a stencil and leaded solder paste were used to reball the chip. And to the question of does it work, yes and no. Powering up the Raspberry Pi 4, Made Doctor shows the Raspberry Pi boot screen does indeed show 16 gig of RAM, but after the rainbow screen, it just halts on a black screen. And so he released the video, even though it was unsuccessful, but says there will be a follow-up video after they've investigated the issue. So we could have a 16 gig Pi 4 in the near future, but it's certainly not easy. Next up was a Facebook story I saved. Uh, so at Marietta GA Micro Center, you can see here loads of Raspberry Pi 4 Model Bs with four gig of RAM and eight gig of RAM showing up in here. Now this was 14th of April, so I don't know what stocks are like now. I'm sure all of that batch has definitely sold out. And if we have a quick look at RPI locator, you can see there's no Raspberry Pi 4s available. We've got Pi 0 Ws, not, not 0 2 Ws, and uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+. Plus. Imagine one day we'll be able to see Raspberry Pi 5s on this list. Although hopefully we won't need that list. Next up from Hackster, I really like this one because uh, there are loads of potholes around here at the moment. Although to be fair, a couple have been, a couple of major ones have been filled recently. Uh, this Raspberry Pi Pico W powered device marks pothole locations, and you can see here Raspberry Pi Pico on a board. All things considered, we in a modern world have it pretty good road wise compared to our ancestors. At the same time, moving at modern automobile speeds means the odd pothole is an annoyance at best and a danger to people and equipment at worst. To help combat this problem, ScienceDude1990 came up with a custom pothole tracking module using a Pico W, a compact U-Block SAM M8Q GPS module, and a red push button. When ScienceDude1990 hits a pothole, he can mash the button and it records the location of the hazard on an Adafruit breakout board. Yeah, great project. Next up from Tom's Hardware again, a name badge becomes a game badge. Raspberry Pi Pico plays MicroPython River Raid. You can see from the image here. And this is by Pixie Latte, and we had an Atari 2600 back in the day. And uh, what's quite interesting here is uh, release date, so 2021, release date 1977, 1.19 megahertz, also 128 bytes of RAM, and the River Raid uh, was a four kilobyte ROM cartridge. And this project today cost $23. Whereas you're looking at $190 for the Atari back in the day, but adjusted for inflation is $850. I really like the way they've worked that out. So good job, Les. This was really cool from the official Raspberry Pi site. So this is a plug and play USB webcam. And you can see it's using the official camera. And it mentions that most webcams are only 720 resolution. And some of the Raspberry Pi cameras are up to 12.3 megapixel sensors. And they provided everything you need in this article. So ideasonboard.com are bringing the software. It's a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. That might be a bit of a hold up because they're a nightmare to get hold of. The result is a plug and play USB webcam that can rival any expensive off the shelf web camera. And you can see all the shopping list and everything is here. Yeah, really nice tutorial. Goes all the way through it, lists everything. I might try that. Another Hackaday story, Cyberdex CBM X64X, all-in-one computer dedicated to the Commodore line of computers. So it's using a Raspberry Pi 3A+, Plus, which I think was one of the ones available on RPI Locator, using the BMC64 emulator, so emulating Commodore 64, and also Amiga as well, and select arcade games. And there's various different images in the gallery here. So you can see a couple of arcade-style joysticks, Nice wooden surrounding for the keyboard. Lots of wires coming out of that pie. And I saw this in a few different places, but uh, we'll go to Tom's Hardware again. Raspberry Pi Limited receives investment from Sony Semiconductor Solutions. Eben Upton has provided clarification and answered additional questions regarding the press release of the Raspberry Pi in general. So Sony have announced an agreement to make a minority stake in Raspberry Pi Limited with a view to forming a strategic collaborative edge AI development framework. And I'll put a link in this story, as I will to all the stories, if you want to read more about that. 
Back on the Raspberry Pi site, how to build your own Raspberry Pi watch. A Raspberry Pi RP2040 powered watch, so a Pico powered watch, or the chip in a Pico. 1.28 inch display, you can see it looks pretty cool there, nice and bright. Comes with pre-blown firmware, but no documentation at all, so I guess it's time to try and figure out how they're talking to the screen. Not sure about this picture, this one looks a lot better, but this angle looks a bit exposed. I'm guessing the waterproof rating's not going to be too high but definitely a cool looking piece of kit. And this is a rather specialist one, again from Tom's Hardware. Uh, Raspberry Pi Pico gives you control. Now, if you have a look at this, basically it's allowing you to plug in old style controllers from many different systems from back in the day. And it's using a Raspberry Pi Pico, but it works with the Mr. Multi system, which is uh, supposed to be a very authentic or very accurate emulation. I remember watching a video about this a while ago. Uh, but the systems that it works with so you can use your original controllers with it and this obviously adapts it to work with that system so all the Atari systems Commodore Amiga Vic 20 Commodore 64 and some more obscure ones ZX Spectrum Amstrad MSX Sega Mega Drive and Master System so yeah really nice to see that you can still use those old controllers although some of those controllers weren't very nice uh, they're certainly the ergonomics and the system. We've come a long way with something like an Xbox or a PS5 controller. But part of it is the nostalgia and getting it to work. So you're looking at $93 before tax or $74.99 in the UK. Some hardcore people either into emulation or love that. And another one by Les, he finds all these stories. I really love this image. So it's a Chinese takeout on the go. And you can see it's got multiple screens for ordering food. But the really interesting bit is at the bottom here, where you can see all the pies on display, the cabling's all there, it just looks really cool. So it's powered by six Raspberry Pi 4s, so it's worth about 10 grand. So it's in Houston, Texas, recent addition to the area, it seems the owners have a love for sci-fi. How far is Houston from Atlanta? Maybe they've bought all the ones that were in Marietta earlier on. Here's some close-up images and of the pies, very nice. Hope that's strong glass. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.